Well, you don't. Um, first of all, if you can see me, just for you guys, I've put on my holiday shirt, right? You know why? Because this is a talk on happiness, right? So I want you all to be in a happy state of mind and just, you know, be in that place which you feel like, you know, you're sipping a margarita, whatever it is you do when you're happy, get yourself in that mindset because we're here to talk about what makes us happy as developers. I mean, I say as developers, right? My own team bash me for saying developers. It's actually engineers in general, QA, dev, etc. all of them. So first section, let's hop onto it. Who am I? I'm a software engineer at Primary Bid. I lead project-based teams to deliver on an estimated schedule. Project-based basically means my teams switch up all the time. So I'm not working with the same people at the same time. I have, um, I've done a course on mental health first aiding. Um, I'll go into that later, but essentially everyone should have a mental health first aider within their own company. If not, they should have multiple actually, so anyone can go to them to speak for things. Um, and it's a fantastic thing for anyone to do. It's a two day course, you should definitely consider it. Besides that, um, I do have developers um, that I manage under a professional capacity. What that means is, for example, developers one-to-ones, having their six month reviews, et cetera. So I have that as well. That happens separately from project work, which is actually quite a cool thing to be doing. Um, but I'll, I'll come to it again at the end. Um, previously, I used to be in medical school. I was in there for four years. Um, yes, I can help you out with any of your cold and issues and other things, but you remember, I'm not a professional in that now. So um, anyway, <laughs> um, and now I'm doing what I love. So I love software development and I love working in teams and working with other people. Never does a day in my life at work, I mean, especially here at Premier Bid, do I feel like I'm working. Like I'm genuinely just happy all the time with what I'm doing. Um, so that's me. And then let's go on to what the talk is going to be on. Um, it's split into three areas. They're all basically the same topic, but just for a bit of linearity so you understand what's happening. We're going to first talk about what is developer happiness, then why does that lead to success, and how do you bring that happiness into your company? So let's go straight on to it. Remember, it's only, what, maybe probably I've got 12 and a half minutes now. So let's go on to it. And the first, what I, I chose to do it away that was actually quite fun. I did an internal survey in primary bid and got everyone to give me their reasons for what makes them happy. Um, and most of the reasons you're gonna see are from what makes them happy at primary bid. Um, this was like completely anonymous. So I don't know who in the company has said this. So um, I've been quite happy to see the responses, to be honest. I think we got about 80 to 85% people that uh, marked as happy. And out of that, there was about 55% um, that were very happy. Uh, so they're broken down into eight sections because they pertain to those different areas. This first one is comments that relate to leadership. So people say that things that make them happy, right? When they have great leaders. So you see here, we've got our tech leads are awesome and our CTO cares. You wanna make sure you've got that because it makes people feel appreciated, not just from them around them, but right up from the top. The other thing that pertain to the people in a leadership position is making sure proper time is allocated for tasks, appreciation from the top on the importance of testing. Obviously, this is one of our QA team. Flexibility to accommodate unplanned tasks. Again, increasing deadlines, et cetera, being responsive, being the ones that are able to calm people down. Um, you know, really brings a lot of ease to people when the leadership is there to, to support them. Um, and then, Everything else kind of falls under the same thing. Seeing the work I do is appreciated and also knowing that different tasks at different times. Next one is your meaningful business goals. So I've got a few of them here from the people. So there's six quotes we've got. Um, the feeling of doing good work and being able to continue contribute meaningfully to Premier Bid's mission. The company progresses to deliver useful software to public and the world. Business values align with mine contributing to amazing software, which changes people's lives. Now, obviously, right, let's be honest, this is an advert for primary bed, right? Um, but it wasn't, I didn't mean to do it that way. I just had the people there that I could have got a survey from in our own company. And I thought, why the hell not? I've got nothing to be afraid of. I'm sure, you know, like we instill this culture where we want people to believe what they're doing is for good. It doesn't matter if you're working for a really big financial company, you can still find reason for making your developers or your engineering team happy in what they do. I'm gonna come back to that in the end. Other quotes, we've got team chemistry. This is all about friend friendship. These are direct quotes. That's why they're a bit, you know, not direct sentences. So someone said friendliness, the team, my team members, which are actually friends. Um, you know, everyone is nice, peer acceptance, working for a diverse bunch of people, great colleagues who are here with the code quality and best practices. All of that comes under team chemistry. And then what we have is collaboration. 
this was this surprised me, right? I'm gonna be honest, it's very surprising. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people specifically said they liked the collaboration. They specifically said they like working with the different departments, QA, DevOps, data science, PMs, etc. And I guess that means there must be this feeling of, you know, when you're in a football team and you've got everyone running for the goal. When you finish a project, it must feel really damn good doing it together. And I'm sure I feel happy as well doing that. Um, I mean, one of the quotes there, right? Understand team members are a company um, from interdiscipl interdisciplinary collaboration. It provides continual growth of a successful product. Everyone is part of the whole, you know, um, and clearly collaboration is a big thing, especially here at Prime River by the looks of it, or, you know, they, they love it. Now, <laughs> clearly this is the largest one, right? This has the most quotes out of all of them. They're all like two set, two words, but if they're quite clear, cool stack, shiny modern tech stack, um, cool technologies, doing what I love, work on stuff that falls in the sweet spot, not challenging, but not beyond my ability. I mean, all of this is pretty much, you know, you gotta be on cutting against technology. You can't be using some old school tech on a server rack. You know, if you wanna keep your developers happy, I promise you this is the biggest thing on my whole list of things that make them happy, you know? If you're working on something that's boring, you're not going to have fun. If you're forced to watch a movie with your wife and it's all about romance and you like action movies, you're not going to have fun. So get some interesting tech, get some complicated problems to solve. Ask your developers, you know, what is there that we can do to that would excite you? Next one is trust. There's only five speech bubbles, but this has some heavy weighting to it. Okay, some heavy weighting to it. Trusted to implement solutions without any politics or process as an experienced engineer. Many connotations to that, but the main point is we give trust to those who have the level of experience. We also give ownership to people to solve problems and guide them. I mean, I love, I love that quote. This person that says, interesting work which gets the mental juices flowing. Now that is natural adrenaline. Now that is what you want to give your people, you know, your team, yourself, that's what you want. Not being micromanaged, managed, technical freedom, autonomy, big one. If autonomy isn't in the forefront of your company, I'm sorry, but that is something that really will make you fail because how the hell are you gonna scale without giving everyone else time to, to grow themselves? Um, okay, work-life balance. Again, this is one that's talked about all around the world, but you know what? It's worth it. They're all direct quotes. Work-life balance, work-life balance, realistic expectations, flexible working hours. Come on, guys. If you think that you need to give somebody um, 10 hours to do something and it's not done, that's not kind of going to work nowadays. You need to trust people to do the work, okay? You can't just say to somebody, excuse me, this isn't done in two hours. Well, you don't know how long a, a, a person ABC takes to, say, to, to do something. You really need to be realistic in your expectations. This is from peer to peer and from, you know, from different levels, from top to junior, junior to high. You need to be careful of that. Someone obviously loves their pay. Be competitive with your pay. I can't say much else besides that. Sustainable velocity, very important. I will come back to that, but basically do not work your people to the bone. That is very bad. And if it needs to be done, tell them in advance and also, you know, tell them that they, you know, why we're doing it. You know, we need to have that understanding of it. Anyway, reminder that these are all quotes that people think have said that make them happy, you know, working as an engineer. Learning and progressing. This is the last one of out of all the quotes. Um, this is essentially there's six of them there, um, and they're pretty simple. The learning side of things, you have to give people time to learn. Whether it's they've got a ticket, they're working on something, and you say, "Go ahead, take your time, go do it." Let them do it. You know, if there's a new developer in, do not force them to go and figure out, you know, a whole microservice architecture and think they're going to deploy it for you without giving them the time to learn. And um, this is, someone has said, they're, hap they're happy when they gain the mastery of software and tools. They're happy when there's constant learning and self-progression. There are also people are happy that help other people advance and learn. Now that's not my quote, that, but that makes me very happy. I love helping others as well. And again, opportunities to grow. So make sure you're giving your people um, the ability to tell you when they're gonna grow and how they're gonna grow. I'm going to come back to all of this at the end as to how we can start implementing these things into our own companies. 
So next, um, why does all of this developer happiness lead to success? Now, if you've got Mr. Happy Chirpy no man in your company, I don't know, maybe some of you are thinking, man, this guy's absolutely nuts. How's he going to lead my company to success? He's just going to make everyone go out and parties. You know what? I probably will make everyone go out and parties, but that's okay. Um, Aside from that, there's some very real, real, real reasons why happiness is an extremely important thing when it comes to your company. In my opinion, it's the most important thing to make your company successful, not just in the engineering department, but everywhere. But the benefits I'm going to talk here do correlate into your engineering department, but they will also be able to be used elsewhere. Now, if you go through one by one, you have more motivated teams. Why are they motivated? They're waking up, they're happy, they're turning on their laptops, they're like, hello, how are you? They're coming up with more ideas, you know, they're ready for the day. And in difficult times, everyone is there. I'm going to tell you about the time when we were doing the delivery IPO. It was the biggest crunch time ever. But you know what? We loved our job and we all wanted to do it and we all wanted to contribute no matter what the time was. And everyone knew we were in it together. And you're not going to get people helping you do that if they are not happy. And you know what? Once they do that, you have to appreciate them. We appreciated everyone in our company. We gave them time off. We did everything else. Clearly, it's confidential. We can't mention everything. But, you know, you have to appreciate people for when they give that extra time so yes they'll do it but also appreciate it when people are, are happier they're in a higher efficiency due to being in the zone the zone is basically when you're zenned out and you're doing things that would take you two hours and half an hour um, and that happens when you have this sense of endorphins and dopamine inside your system that just makes you do your thing because you love it deadlines are met because of obviously the above and um, less churn of employees you saw one of ours were there redundancies are basically non-existent um, um i can't actually think I actually can't think of more than two people where we're more than 100 people in a company. I actually cannot think of more than two people who have left the company. But that's, you know, like that's not to say there might not be more. It's just that me personally, who I've worked with in the engineering department, I really do not know. Um, you know, you, you need to make people happy and they'll stay with you. A performance equilibrium is met. That basically means you have your high workers, you've got your medium workers and your, you know, your low efficiency workers. But overall, right, you know, you'll have days when someone's happy, someone's sad. But overall, the equilibrium between all of your teams will make everyone meet targets. And trust me, right, you have to help each other. You can't shun someone for not doing 100% one day. Well, you know what? You don't even need to do 100% every day. 80% every day is actually perfect as long as you're consistent and you're happy doing it. Okay. And then better, more creative solutions are proposed. If you've got somebody that's just there to make something click and work, they're going to do it. But they're not going to be doing it in a way that's going to make them feel excited and proud of it. And the only way you're going to do that is if they're happy and if they're going to feel proud of what they're doing. And again, that all comes into happiness. Lower number of production issues due to prep better code. I mean, come on, who doesn't want that? Who does not want not being called up at 12 a.m.? Oh, this is broken. That is broken. Trust me. That is probably one of the best things ever. We're getting more and more, more, less and less production issues because we're putting time into it. Let's go on to how we're going to bring this in there, right? Let's go on to how we are going to bring this in to our teams and how we at Primary Bid are actually already doing it. Very first and foremost is leadership. Leadership comes right from the top. That is our, our all of our C people, you know, like Aaron and Salil and Anand, everyone up there, right? They have to be on board with this. They need to be there. And you know what? What we what we have right now is we speak, they speak to everyone in the company whenever they join. They've got an open channel to them as well. They're completely comfortable with anybody speaking to them. And you have to do that. And then from there it goes down and down and down. Um, and and the funny thing I'm saying down, but I'm going to change that analogy. Um, you go to the next level um, you'll have, for example, the head of engineering or you'll have the head of, of design or then you have team leads and then you have seniors. And everyone has to be instilled with this idea that happiness is important and they need to know that they should be caring about that. On one-to-ones, it is not time for you to ask how they've progressed on their work. It's time for your um, teammate to, to talk about how they feel, to talk about things they want to do better. Okay. Um, and then the meaningful business goals, they need to be, you know, they, they need to have some main reason. You know, it's okay to want to make money. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know what? If you're going to make money, yeah, and that's your main goal, you know, t tell it to your employees and then give them some of that money as well. Give them a bonus. Give them something like that. Again, don't take my word on it. Not legal advice. You know, the whole thing. Um, but think about 
Do my goals align with what I want to do? Does it help the world? Does it help do something good? So generally, try to find a reason why you're doing your business. Most businesses are along those lines. They came from a problem and they give a solution. So put that into your mind as well. Team chemistry, how do you bring that? You just need to basically, let me be frank and honest with you, pay for a people team. Take the money at the bank and pay for a people team. Trust me, we've got four, five, four, three or four people on our, t- on our people team right now. And you know what? We want to expand it. We want to have more people thinking about these mental health initiatives. We want to pay people to think how to make our team happier. Trust me, biggest investment you're going to make. Collaboration, make sure everyone can talk to everyone. For me, one of the biggest things I do, right, whenever I have a meeting with a PM or anyone else, it's an open invitation um, for anyone else on that on that team working. Don't make it just between two people, make everyone involved. And if I can just talk again about leadership, you're not you're not there, you're you're not someone's, you know. You don't have a whip in your hand. You're not telling someone what to do, right? We're all the same level as human beings. We see each other on the street. There's nothing different about us. You're you're not smarter and you're not better than anyone else. We're all on the same level and anybody can tell anything to you. Having the title junior or this, this, that signifies your level of skill and knowledge. But as a human, you are the same level and person. So make sure you respect them and give them the time to speak about things as well. Um, exciting technology, it was an obvious one. Um, make sure you're right in, in top of things, right at the front of it. Um, give exciting problems to solve with that technology. For example, you know, we hear about uh, micro front ends and microservices, and we talk about using, you know, all these new tech stacks um, and, and let people give ideas and, and come to discussions on them. Trust and autonomy. Um, you have to let people do their own thing. You have to let people feel as if they have creative control over the thing they are making. And whether it doesn't need to be single control, but joint control, because, you, you know, too many uh, cooks do mess up the broth, right? That That is a fact, but you have, you can't micromanage, you can't do all of these things. You're not going to scale. None of that's going to work. Okay. Um, and work-life balance, obvious one, make sure everyone's listened to, make sure they've got time with their family. Me, myself, right? I make sure that recently I've put, told myself uh, after I finish my, like we're flexible, so I'll work whenever I want, but I'm married, I've got a four-year-old daughter, and so I need to make sure I'm giving that time. And you know what, Aaron um, and Brendan, my, my managers, they, they, they will say to me, yeah, go go take some time and do this and do that. It doesn't matter if your employee's passionate, you need to tell them, excuse me, Mr. or Mrs. I think it's time for you to take a break. I know you love what you're doing, Take a break, yeah? It's everyone's responsibility that everyone is happy. Last one, learning and progression. Pay for courses, pay for things. If someone asks for it, don't make it difficult. Make it in the front page. Hey, you've got learning. Hey, you've got this. We'll pay for it. We'll give you it. You know, whatever you want. And progression, you have to bring it in, man. How is someone going to put effort in if they're not knowing where they're going in six months or in a year or in two years? Trust me, make a two-year plan for people because they're going to stay for those two years because they know they're going to get that. Anyway, um, this, that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, I don't have too much time, but what I'm going to do is go back to slide one and, and leave it there and let you guys ask whatever you want to ask me.